Good afternoon, DE students. Today we are going to be looking at 1, 2, 5, which is understanding analog design inside of the random number generator. Um, we will all be creating a random number generator in class that is actually our second soldering project. Um, so once we get our materials in, we will be working on um, that specific project. But before we get there, we have to understand the multiple components of the random number generator, beginning with the analog design. So in this presentation, we're going to be looking at the random number generator block diagram, and then we are also going to be looking at the analog section of the random number generator. So the block design is, the block diagram is this. So this is, we haven't looked too much at block diagrams, um, but basically it's a flowchart explaining how you are going to design electronic component. Um, so up here you can see we have an image of a push button switch um, indicating a press to roll. It's then going to feed into the analog section, which produces a dampened square wave that rolls the count and slowly stops. So you can see a visual of what they want that clock signal to look like. It's then going to go into sequential logic. So on every pulse of the clock, okay, so every one of these square waves, the sequential logic section increments a binary count from one to six and then repeats. So coming out of our sequential logic section, we have an output A, output B, and output C. Depending on the pulsation and modulation of that square wave depends on whether we get on what binary number we are getting. So it creates those different outputs. That's then going to go into a combinational logic section, which encodes that binary um, into a seven-segment display. So we're going to have seven-segment displays that we are feeding into, which are going to display the numbers. So we're essentially creating a digital electronic dice um, that will roll the numbers one through six um, indicated on our seven-segment display. So moving on, this is actually what the schematic would look like um, of the random number generator. You can see here's our push button. That push button is then going into two different resistors. We have a capa we have three different capacitors, um, total of three resistors. We have five volt power and a ground going into a VCC. Um, so we have our blah, going into the LM555C and so a 555 timer. So we have the VCC um, and the different components attached in this way. And then our out is our clock signal. So our 555 timer is working on, as our clock signal to create those square waves. So this is the actual version that we have our simplified version over here. Um, so again, when you push the button and the switch goes, the 100 microfarad capacitor or C1 quickly charges to 5 volts um, through the 1.2 kilo ohm resistor, um, which is labeled as R8 in the diagram. So as long as you push the button the switch and the switch remains pressed, the top end of the 10K resistor, R9, um, stays at 5 volts. So this results in a simplified version that's equivalent to a 555 timer oscillation. So again, that 555 timer is controlling our waves depending on how it is being fed through the different resistors and capacitors. So looking at the simplified version, okay, up here we have calculation for our different resistors, RA, RB, and then our capacitors, okay. Looking at our period, our calculation for period ends up being 14.982 microseconds and our frequency is 66.74 hertz is what it comes out at. That ties into the waves on the oscilloscope um, because as that simulation flows, we should have it hooked into two channels, A and B. Um, one of the channels is going to go in before C2, essentially be connected to these two components of the 555 timer. And then the out signal is going into channel A. Um, so then we have V out right here, and then we have VC right here. So V out symbolizes here, VC is channel B. Okay. Um, looking at that simplified version of that timing analysis, you can see right here we've got T um, for our period, and then our frequency, again, 66.66 hertz is what we're looking at. Okay, so now looking at the actual version, when we push the button um, and it's held, the analog section of the board game counter performs like a standard 555 timer oscillator. However, um, in order for it to co operate correctly, the oscillation does eventually have to slow and eventually stop. And that's where those capacitors and that resistor come in. So they work on slowing down that signal in a way that essentially slows the roll of the die. Okay, so here's a simulation of the actual version. Um, as it goes, you can see we have a little bit of a different signal coming through. So this is where our push button is pressed. And then as it is released, 
eventually we start getting more modulation, more space in between these waves. Our peaks end up being longer. Okay, you can see the same thing down here on the VC. Okay, they're very tight waveforms and then they start getting bigger and bigger scallops from that point. Now you'll notice on this one we also connect to channel C, um, which is giving us right here from next to that button. So we actually end up with three different channels and you can see that channel dips as well on this oscilloscope. Okay, so looking at the timing of the actual version, when we push the button, uh, the 555 timer produces about 66 hertz as a square wave, and then once it's released, uh, the frequency gradually decreases. This will take some time for it to decrease, um, so eventually your oscillation will stop. Okay, so looking at time A, so you can see we've adjusted our markers here, 1 and 2, to frame out a portion of our, of our wave. Okay, so we're looking at 15.53 uh, microseconds over here, and then our frequency is again going to be 64.36 hertz. Okay, looking at time B, okay, again we have an adjustment, this is time B, we're looking at a different period um, and a slightly different frequency. And then time C, further along after that button has been released, again, we have a longer period and a smaller frequency. Okay, so this is our analog section. We are going to be talking about the sequential logic and the combinational logic further along. Um, we are just focusing on analog today. All right, so I am going to pause here and then I'm going to come back on after a brief transition and we're going to discuss the assignment that you are completing today and the expectations for that. So please take a moment while the transition occurs to make sure that you have that assignment open in classroom. All right, DE students, we are back. So I'm going to walk you through 1.2.6, understanding the analog design random number generator. Um, so in your introduction, it states that the field of analog electronics is unique. Um, it's distinct from it's distinct from the study of digital electronics, um, and that we've only gone over just the surface of analog electronics. Um, and this project will be the last activity in the world of analog electronics. So this is the very end of Unit 1. Um, we're going to be moving into Unit 2 in the second quarter. So we're going to go through this and your procedure. So right here you have a diagram of the random number generator. Now we in the presentation looked at a simplified version of this um, because there's some issues with trying to run this through the simulation software. Uh, first it's difficult to obtain an accurate simulation using the push button um, and also the 100 microfarad capacitor causes the simulation to run too long. So to fix that we are going to so to fix these issues, we're going to take some simple changes to the circuit. First, we're going to replace the push button with a single pull, single throw switch, so that's indicated right here. And then we're going to change the 100 microfarad capacitor to a 50 microfarad, um, So, and that would be right here. So, And then the oscilloscope connections are highlighted here. So this is what you're actually going to be using in multi-SIM. So you're going to enter into multi-SIM and then create the modified circuit. Um, and then with the switch closed, you need to start your simulation. That's where you're going to dial in your oscilloscope and adjust your the scale of your time base and your channels so that way you can see the three different signals distinctly, just like in this image. Um, after you have that established, stop the simulation and restart it. And after the first few score waves are observed on the output signal, open the switch. So that means actually as the simulation is running, click in your diagram and open the switch. What you're going to notice is that the oscillation is going to slow and then stop. It may take a few moments, so be patient. Um, and then you need to adjust the oscilloscope to display the third or fourth square wave of the output signal um, using the markers. So measure the period of the signal and then use the data to calculate the frequency and record your results in this table. So you're looking for first square wave, middle square wave, and last square wave. You're going to, going to repeat step six for a signal in the middle of the simulation, last, obviously documenting that in the table, and you have two conclusion questions right here. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, pretty basic, pretty simple. This is, again, our last little dive into analog before we move on into unit two. All right, enjoy.